everyone, it's Michelle from My Craft Source. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, make sure you're subscribing so you can get all our updates as we're posting them. So I have been thinking, Christmas is right around the corner and I haven't even started my Christmas shopping. Well, no worries because who wants store-bought gifts anyways? I have got some great ideas that I'd like to share with you on a Christmas gift that you can personalize for anyone in your family. So make sure you stay tuned to this video so you can see how we take a wooden sign and use or a mask to create something extraordinary with it. Okay, so let me go over a few of the things that I grabbed that we will need for this project. Uh, to begin with, you just need a wooden plaque or sign or anything wooden that you would like to use this technique on. I happen to have a Razorback sign because, you know, I live in Arkansas and my family is an Arkansas Razorback fan. So I just know that somebody in my family is going to love this specific design. So that's why I went with a hog, but you can certainly use any other design your heart desires. Um, so this is just a piece of wood that's been stained uh, and I haven't even sealed it yet. So it's just got the, the basic stain on it. Um, you can use unstained wood if you like that look, but really the thing is, is once this vinyl is on here, you don't want to have to go back and restain it. So make sure your base color that you're looking for is already on your wood. Mine is just like a mahogany stain with a red stain on the hog, but yours could be pine or mahogany or uh, distress, dr uh, like a driftwood look, whatever you desire. Um, and we're just going to make sure that's dried for a couple days before we proceed because we don't want our vinyl to peel off any of the finish. So if you've used paint, paint takes a lot longer to cure uh, thoroughly. Even though it might feel dry, it's going to still be uh, tacky to the adhesive that we're going to be using on our aura mask. So give it a few days to dry before you proceed. Uh, and stain actually has more of an oil base, so it might repel some of that adhesive. So <clears throat> you definitely want those to dry fully before we proceed to this next step. So I just grabbed a clear coat um, to put over our painted design when we're finished. This is going to seal it and make sure that none of the paint chips off. I have some basic white paint and this is just Anita's all-purpose acrylic white. Nothing special here. I'm sure any of the whites that you have in your cupboard would work just fine. This just happens to be what I have on hand. Uh, and I grabbed some Maj Podge. So the Maj Podge is my little secret to get nice sharp edges. Uh, so I'll show you how that's done um, after I show you the different vinyls we're using. Um, so this is our Aura Mask and this is the 810. This is a masking film that's going to be better for uneven surfaces. And my wood is an uneven surface because you have a little bit of texture with the wood grain and the little bumps and grooves that are in it. So I wanted to make sure I picked out one of the masking films that has an adhesive that will work better with this uneven surface. So we do have Aura Mask 813. Uh, those are going to be for more even surfaces. So this brown masking film is what I'm going to be using on this wood because we don't have a nice smooth shiny surface. Okay, and then I also grabbed just some Orcal 651. So this is something that I want to use on the top over my stencil after I've hand painted it. This step is completely optional, but I thought I would like the look of that outlined black line on my Arkansas Razorback A that I'm going to be putting on here and the Orcal is going to give me the sharpest edge I could get. Um, I feel like if I was to go back and hand draw that or use the stencil film, I'm just not going to achieve that sharpness that I'm looking for even after using my little secret Maj Podge method. Um, but you never know, I might get there and I actually might like it just the white without any outline and I may skip that step. But I thought it would be nice to kind of go over using Orcal 651 on wood as well. So grab your supplies, 
let's go cut out our stencil and our vinyl and we'll get to applying that on this surface. One thing I forgot to mention is you do need some transfer tape because once we've weeded away our vinyl, we need a way to transfer that design onto our wood. So we have a, a giant roll of transfer tape. I'm gonna grab that and then we're gonna get started. So this vinyl can be used on a Cricut, the Brother Scan and Cut, the Silhouette, um, any of the cutters that you have out there, this Aura Mask will work perfect with. When selecting your cut settings, you just want to use the vinyl mat option on your cutter. Um, if you don't have a vinyl mat option, then just the plain vinyl option will work just fine. But as always, I recommend doing a test cut because every cutter is different and your blade's gonna be different than my blade, your machine's gonna be differently calibrated than the ones that I've worked with. So always do a test cut and find what works best for you. But my recommendation is to use the vinyl setting. When you're placing your vinyl onto your cutting mat, with any adhesive vinyl, you always wanna make sure that the paper side is down on your mat. So you would be putting it like this on your cutter before you send it through. If you're cutting it paper side up, then you are cutting it wrong and it's gonna be a disaster to try to figure out what you did. Um, because all those little pieces are going to just be loose on this mat and it's just going to be a nightmare. So first things first, make sure you're loading it the proper way by putting the paper side down into your cutter. Okay, so I've sent my vinyl to the cutter and now I just want to weed away my positive space. So I want to leave the negative space on my stencil. The positive space that's getting removed is where we're gonna be painting. So I'm just gonna grab my weeding tool and I'm gonna start weeding away that space so that way I can go ahead and apply this to my wood. And there we have it. So now you can see I've got the Arkansas A weed it away and then now I just need to transfer this over to my hog okay and now I'm just gonna weed away my ore cow I just want to take my inner part of the A off because all I want is the outline of this the ore cow is on a pressure sensitive backing which kind of helps you to weed away easily uh, that's something that's kind of nice about the ore count, makes it a little bit easier to work with. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut my vinyl to size because I don't want to waste all this extra vinyl that I could reuse for another project. So I'm just grabbing a pair of scissors and trimming it down. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this excess since I don't need that on my design. Now you can see that's what my A turned out to look like. This is the outline that I may or may not use later on in our project, but it's there in case I decide I would like it. Now this vinyl also is good for spray paint application, and if you wanted to use it in that manner, then you just wouldn't have to cut it down like I'm doing here. You could use the whole sheet, but because I'm going to be painting mine by hand, I'm going to go ahead and trim it down. reused my transfer mask a few times that's why it's a little bit wrinkly looking but there's nothing wrong with that you can use it as many as times as you can manage to get it to stay sticky so it'll still work the same so I'm just running my squeegee over that so I can transfer my stencil over and sometimes it helps to flip it over to help peel it away Gravity sort of helps to assist you this way. All right. Okay, once I feel that I've got a good placement, I'm just gonna grab my squeegee and run it over to transfer this design 
onto my wood. And just put some firm pressure on there to make sure that we're getting a good seal. And what I'm gonna do, just so you can see the difference of using the Mod Podge versus not using the Mod Podge, is half of my A I'm not gonna pre seal with Mod Podge, and then the other half I will, just so you can see the difference that the edges create, the, sh the difference in the sharpness of the edges. Now that we've got a good bond on our stencil, we're ready to go ahead and move on to our painting. So let's go ahead and do our half with our Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna do half with just the white, and we'll compare the results at the end and see which gave us the sharpest lines. And we just want a thin coat of the Mod Podge around the edges. Uh, how it works is the Mod Podge dries clear, so it, the clear kind of goes in and seals any of the gaps that this stencil vinyl was not able to uh, seal whenever we pressed it down. The Mod Podge kind of goes in and gives it the extra seal between those gaps. And I mean it adds an extra step, but to get that nice crisp lines, it's definitely worth it. Okay, so there's our Mod Podge layer, and then next I'm going to go and grab my white and do my white layer over there. And I also want to do a few layers of white because this isn't the best white paint, so it's not going to have great coverage. So by doing a couple coats of it, it's going to give me a nice even white. And if you didn't like the hand painted look, you could just go with vinyl. But I really want the wood grain to show through my white. So it kind of matches the wood grain that's all over the rest of my design. You do want to make sure the Mod Podge dries all the way before you proceed with your white coat, but because I didn't put any on this side, I'm going to go ahead and do my white on this side. this aura mask to create a little outdoor sign to put on my porch. I just think it would make the perfect little uh, welcome plaque, welcome plank that I can lean against my front entrance uh, and then I can put something on the back of it that's you know like holiday themed. Maybe I could do like some spooky ghosts on one side and pumpkins on the other and then flip it when the seasons come so it's multi-purpose uh, and I think this ore mask would work great for that sort of application um, so I think that one of my next videos will actually be just that creating a welcome plank and that would make a great gift to someone as well um, even if you did it maybe Christmas themed or an Easter one or just a welcome and maybe a thankful on one side uh, the options are endless but it would still be a great craft to create to give to that special someone at Christmas um, this is you know a great gift for a guy because you know men are a little bit harder to buy for and they can't not like it when you've made it, right? Because it comes from the heart. <laughs> now, I guess I could make it wrong if I made my hog pink. Uh, I'm sure there would be some flack about that. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to let this dry for a minute or two. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my coat over my Mod Podge. My Mod Podge is almost dry to where I can go ahead and put my coat of that on. And then it's also going to help let this white dry for a little bit too.
So I've put my two coats of white paint over my stencil and now I'm just ready to peel the stencil away to reveal the white paint design underneath. Stay tuned and I'm going to show you which did the better trick to get a nice crisp sharp edge by either using the Maj Paj or just uh, relying on the stencil vinyl. So if you look closely here, you can see this fuzzy edges from where we just painted the white relying on the edge of the stencil. So everywhere there's a wood grain, you can see where the white paint seeped in and kind of traveled down that wood grain. Now on the side that I sealed first with the Maj Paj, it did an excellent job of creating a nice crisp edge because the Maj Paj, which is clear, went in and sealed those grooves so that white paint couldn't travel down the wood grain. So my advice is to always do that clear coat first. I just think you're going to get the better results and especially if you don't plan on going back over it with an outline like we're going to be doing with our 651. But because we're going to be doing 651, I don't mind this feathered edge because this will be getting covered up in the end anyways. So I just picked up this gloss crystal clear coat that is the Krylon brand from Walmart. And this is what I'm going to be spraying over top of our painted stencil design before I place that Orcal 651 onto my plaque. Um, so this is something that needs to be done outside. So I'll be seeing you outside and we'll be spraying a clear coat over our design. See you in a few. Okay, so I have given my sign plenty of time to dry, so that way I can go ahead and proceed to putting on my Orcal 651. First, tape over our Orcal. And just flip it over so we can transfer our design onto our wood sign. So if you feel like you would like to have the ability to kind of move your vinyl a little bit, you can replace your paper and use it as a way to sort of slide your design over to get the best alignment. Okay, and then I'm just going to take that paper off. Now we're ready to go ahead and squeegee our outline onto our design here. Can't wait to see what projects you're going to be creating using the Aura Mask or the Orcal 651.